back. We back with Thinking Minds Podcast. We in here. Before we get started again, uh, we want to give a shout out to the Preservation Bar. Um, mm-hmm. Most definitely. If you want to tell what, us what a we, little bit what, more about that. What yeah. we got here? Oh, so, uh, Mento had asked me to bring in a wine. This yep. is one of my favorites that I've, we picked out that I have in the store. Um, this is Domaine Juliet uh, Avril, which is a, a French wine. Um, and they actually... Um, yeah. But um, it's just one that we carry in the store, and, and um, we're, we're very much kind of a... Um, when we talk about what, what we do, we're kind of... Um, the store, I, I, most pe- people would say connoisseurs, but it's more we have a, a collection of, of wines that we've hand-picked everything. So anybody that's working there should, you know, you walk in, and within about four questions, they should be able to hand you exactly what you're looking for. Um, but this one in particular is one of my favorites because... Um, it's from a, a, a group of winemakers that actually have property in a, a region of France called Chateauneuf du Pop, um, which is basically the, the Pope's castle. Um, and so that was a, a region of, of what I think is some of the best wines in the world, like kind of visceral. I use the word bloody, which is often some people, but I'm referring more to the viscosity without as much of the alcohol sweetness that you get with it. Uh, but it's one of my favorite types of wine. But um these guys actually own Chateau de Pop or uh, Chateau Juliet, uh, which is a Chateau de Pop that they make. That's you know in our store it's a hundred dollar bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. Um, these are the same people with with a, a vineyard that's about two kilometers south of Chateau, so it can't be called Chateau de Pop, but it's the same winemakers with some of the same grapes making because of a regional disparity. That's a twenty five dollar bottle of wine, right? So you're drinking a hundred dollar bottle of wine for twenty five dollars, which is tend to be our favorite picks. At, preservation um we have one that's a, a sparkling rosé and it's made in argentina but it's made by french winemakers that left champagne and went to argentina and i mean taste everything like a hundred dollar bottle of champagne but 19 dollars. so um wine's one of those things you, i mean you can pay for a good bottle of wine and, and have it and it's great and you can also spend a lot of money and or you can spend a lot less money and have quality things as well and, and that's one of the kind of things about wine world that i, I love and that's one i when when the uh, distributors came through and I taste us, it send me all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will be selling this as long as I can get it. So, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Preservation Bar location. Uh, it's twenty four forty Nashville Road, uh, Suite one hundred three. Um, it sits over in uh, Penn Station, uh, which is over uh, K Pasta Taco, Lost River Pizza. It's right over beside the Dairy Queen off Nashville Road. They got great music. They got great vibe. Literally, it's one of the most chill bar that you can go in. You can walk in there and cool people. You kind of yeah, thinking you, people. Literally like thinking talk. people. Yeah. Like like I said, we should travel there and, and you know podcast, have an actual sure. podcast there and just yeah. have. There is literally always just thinking going on. People, it's, it's a bar in which everybody knows everybody and they commute with everyone. So. For a mentor, I didn't know what it was, but I've oh, no. always seen it. Right. Yes. You know, I've always parked over there, went to the uh, uh, Lost River Pizza or to the taco place and stuff. And I'm like, what's going on over there? Because it no. might be like a That's the thing. Block. I'm like, That's the thing. Like thing. Like you, don't know. Where, you don't know. You don't know. And then you walk in. in. It is a secret place. Big <laughs> windows. <laughs> it's nice, bro. <laughs> Listen, you can walk in and walk out of there and nobody know you just went into a bar. Yeah. Like, you don't, like, that's what I like about it. It's so, a different dimension. Yes. Um, shout out Dan fucking Cheney. Um, he's also a co- he one of the co-owners. That's how I met and got involved with this bar. And since then, these guys have been literally taking good care of me. That's good. And That's good. Somebody got to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You been doing it. He been doing it. <laughs> hey, no, no. Honestly, I really yeah. do appreciate it. Like, um, I just lost a mentor of mine and um, and it been heavy. Like, it can, kind of makes me look forward to these things more in life because um, three months and I know there's a lot of things he wanted to say. And a lot of things that I wanted him to say, and a lot of things that I wanted, you know, like ask questions about and things. And I didn't have the opportunity. So I'm now stuck in this thing of the, just having to think about what that person would have yeah. thought. You understand, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, this thinking, like, the man also doing this, is, it means a lot because it gets to, you know, get, 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 get my mind to just think about more than just, you know, what this is negative. It's always just negative. There's the more yeah. to it than everything. So I do appreciate all of it and all, 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 of, you, all of you guys. Anyway, let's get right back into That's it. That's cool. That's cool. Yes, sir. All right. So let's get back into the show. Uh, 
Thanks for our sponsors at the Preservation Bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. And so, uh, holy water. Holy water. Yeah. Holy water, all natural products. Mm -hmm. Make sure you hit the link in the description. Uh, so, Mark, going to jump back in. All right. So, I had a question I was going to ask you about the hereditary thing, but there's, there's something else I want to get. I want you to get out there. Like, in your beliefs, like, what do you, what is life? Like, what animates us? Like, what am I experiencing right now? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm a cluster of cells, carbon-based or whatever. I got a brain. I got, but what gives me life? Like, what is that? Every living thing has it. You know what I'm saying? Until we don't. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when it leaves us, we're just a dead cluster. And, and yes. What is life? Well, and that's the thing, right? Even after we consider, I mean, there's there's science out there that even after we're dead, our, some of our cells are still living, at least for a time, right? And so that's, and, and so it's to me that's a tricky question because I have both a biological answer and and a more uh, philosophical answer to that. And I mean, biologically, what gives us life? I mean, it, it's an easy thing. Like it, it's not us being human, right? It's it's you you live when you grow you develop you reproduce right you consume energy you respond to your environment so a single cell organism can do that does a single cell organism think is i mean we say that's alive but is it right well i, I meant I, more I, like right, what makes right. me a conscience right and that's what i'm saying so, so the more philosophical part of that what makes you conscious i mean to me that's entire that that's the or what makes you alive or sentient to me that that's the answer is your consciousness right because we're going to get the ideal of do you have a soul, right? And to me... Where does it come to, from? To me, a soul is consciousness, right? It, it, and I mean, that that's going to be one of the most fascinating things that we get to explore is a human species currently and, and, and very soon when we start talking about like AI and things like that of can it become conscious, right? Because, um, I mean, AI, there's a lot of stuff where it said scary things to people about stuff, but it's still just reading and compiling stuff off the computer, right? Yes. And, and the question becomes is, is what happens? I mean, I, I think the thing that gives us all of that are our memories, right? I mean, we make decisions based on memories, right? Do I want to eat this? Last time I ate that, it tastes like crap. No, I don't want that. Or, you know, I, and, and when you talk about consciousness, you get into some weird stuff because there's typically, there's considered a hard and a soft problem, right? And that's, and that's the, the hard problem is easy, right? I, I, can, I can say, hey, I had an apple, I like apples. I can remember that I like apples. But the soft problem is the one that's troubling because I can remember what an apple tastes like. And not only that, if I think about it, I taste the apple, right? Because, I mean, there's this idea of it, it's, um, when you talk, con I mean, it's a fantastic thing. And I have several classes I teach about, it, like vanilla ice cream doesn't exist. It's not a real thing, right? Because the thing is, you don't taste vanilla. Like if you look at the receptors on your tongue, they're incapable of tasting vanilla, but you can smell it, right? And so the thing is, you taste vanilla. You taste, when you eat the ice cream, you taste cold. You're capable of that. You taste sugar. You're capable of that, right? But the thing is, I you knew smell it. vanilla. I knew it. <laughs> you, I knew you, it. You smell the vanilla. I knew and those, it. And those two things go up and get put together in your brain. I knew it. And, I, and they exist there, right? So if, oh. I, if I think something stabbed myself through my hand, the pain is here. And it's what I think. But it's not. Pain doesn't exist here. No. It goes it's up in the mind. Right? So, so when you talk about what, what gives us that, to me, it's, it's that set of connections between your neurons that let you, that make you capable of, of putting things together. And that's what our consciousness is, right? I mean. What the science says about what, what, what that is. Um, well, that's, I mean, traditionally more thought of, of, of just it's the number of neurons connected to how, you know, and, and you have the series of, a trillion neurons and, and what lights up and they ping off of each other and eventually it's a gross negative or a gross positive electrical signal, right? But it gets really weird now and like the time it takes to get into that. Like now the big thing is, is looking at quantum mechanics and how changes of fibers even within a single connection can actually change how easily electricity flows through it, how that can affect like that signal. Um, so that can get super, super complicated. But, you know, when you talk about being sentient, in it, I mean, the, the thing that, that you can look at that to me it to me is the most I mean disease is awful and I've had friends and family die of all kinds of things and but but the worst thing that I ever see happen to an individual is dementia. 
My grandma got right. it right yeah. now, 96. And they lose themselves, right? Not only do they lose themselves, they lose their connection to you, right? They, they don't remember you or they, I mean, they'll say awful things. Like I've had, my, my grandmother got it as well. My grandfather had a hard time dealing because he was married to this lady for 60 years. It was the same person. For 60 years, she was the same person. And then slowly that, that started to slip away and she would say things that she would never have said before. To they become like and, an and, heir? Yeah. Like an AI type, like they have all of these words, right? That they are just picking out of and they're just saying. Because we we are saying that they have lost every single connection, yeah, right? There's side but effects yet they, go with it too, But they still got problems, like, but they are still saying with, words, you know? right? Yeah. They, they, they are saying main things or they are saying unthinkable things. Like, and you said that AIs are, don't have con- conscious that they are just taking well, all of this information and put and put that it we know of. That we, yeah, yeah, yeah right. You're right. And, and uh, that's the thing. I, I think the thing that gives us that is is a our memories, because our memories strengthen those connections or make those connections. And but I mean, you make decisions based on that, right? I mean, you touch something and it was hot when you were a kid. You don't do that anymore, right? Or you don't like this food, or or you know you remember this smell, or all of those things tell us. You know, we make our just. I'm going to do this again, or I'm not going to do, or I feel this way. I feel sad, or I feel happy, or all of those things that are what we are, right? The human experience mm-hmm. comes from memories, and when you start losing them, you very rapidly see that dissipate. But, and, and I think that's the thing. I mean, that that to me is what that consciousness is derived from. That, and and honestly, that's to me that's what makes us human, too. But like, like. Couple things stood out when you said human experience, and when you said all living things have this. I don't think that all living things are like us. You know, but how we live and what we do is, I think, I ain't gonna say totally different from everything else because we've seen um, a, a, a monkey get up and freaking have sex like us and do different things like that. Or we've seen dogs well, react yeah, to stuff. You're for the reason. The, yeah, the ability we have to reason. seemed like more of a purpose in life. Uh, okay. Animals, it seems different. It seems like what they're doing is uh, more of a placement here. No, okay. It seems like we so, have a placement. They have, they have a placement. We have a purpose. All right. I'm, Go ahead. I'm, so... One of those things, and, and it depends on, right? I mean, when, what, what kind of animals are we talking about? Ready to talk frogs or cows or, or monkeys, right? But, but at the same time, I still kind of disagree with that a lot from things that I've said, seen. Um, I'm going to say this out loud, although it's the worst thing I could possibly say. For, for So I actually own it, and that's not the worst. I, I have a beef farm on the north side of town, mm. and uh, so I have cows. And, and the thing is, is, I mean, I still eat steak. I love steak a lot. But I promise you, I can show you some things that most people would say, I'll never eat steak again because when you talk about how things act, right? So I've, I've seen, had a cow lose a baby. And, and I've seen her stand where that baby was for three or four days and not move. I mean, just stay right there. Mm-hmm. Where that baby died. I mean, that's mourning. Yeah. Like, I've they're seen some loss. shit going up on a farm, too. Right? I mean, a- animals... We, we like to say they don't have logic, but the same way, I mean, I've, I've had one cow that I've ran out of my yard. I've had to chase her back and put her in the field for the last two weeks trying to figure out where she's getting out because she's, they're, I mean, they're, they're smart and they probe and they figure things out. But do you and, think they have like a purpose far as other than just say like bees are here? If we don't have bees, then we don't have a lot of stuff or if we don't have, it seems like to me they're placed here for a purpose, but they don't have an individual purpose but, like just say me or you are, you know, to, to do different things. Well, I mean, their purpose is, uh, so, I mean, you go with a cow or a bee, right? It's, it, you and you can actually kind of suss out a lot of human behavior this way because at the end of the day, our purpose is to reproduce, right? This idea of like survival of the fittest kind of thing is it's survival of those who reproduce the most. Why because, do we have morals? Because because that, that's my whole thing with science, right? Science can say everything that I agree everything with science. You know, it is it is the physical proof of our existence here. But why do we have morals? Why is it we have common consciousness, and especially if there is nothing beyond science? If there's 
if science is what human is to depend on, why do we have morals? Why is it do do scientists need permission to test humans? Why? Like, I mean, I, I hope so because the, the outcome is usually tragic in every yeah, every chance that they want. Okay, so I, I, so what? Frankenstein. I see. I know so what? what? Saying, what? So That's what? Good. So you keep doing it, and they keep doing it. Nobody complains. We're gonna keep reproducing. Well, Why do we more morally have morals say no? You know what? Let's not do it to each well, other. Well, and I mean that's the thing. So, so it's a fantastic question, right? Because you can almost stand back and say animals don't have morals, and that makes them different, right? Mm-hmm. But I was when also going to say, that, but, do right. a two cow would would not just kill each other, each other, would it? They usually don't, but, right? But, do but, you believe but in human they liberties? Do. Yes, he, I'm, I'm not saying human don't accidentally kill well, each well, other. But that's the thing, right? so, so like, morals you develop tends to be based on your own your own like because everybody's morality is different right sometimes it's religiously based sometimes it's just i'm a good person or i don't want to hurt that person mm. i had a dog once that would would when he would bite like he would clamp down just enough but if if you made any kind of sounds like he was just playing right but he knew how to clamp not to hurt someone yes and so they, they learn like they learn i mean an animal is capable of learning how not how not to hurt you and they won't right like some animals will, some yeah. won't. And to me, and it's, it's that a difference in reptiles mean. and like mammals, right? Oh, because absolutely. reptiles but also, have no morals. But, <laughs> right? They'll eat their but, young. Well, and, and that's the thing. I mean, that's they don't have the responsiveness to that, right? But I mean, would we, if 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 that's what I'm if saying, we were looking at. I mean, do we have morals as far as that goes with other species? Because, like, like I said, I know a cow mourns, and I still enjoy a good steak. Well, so, I saw my granddad. Growing up on a farm, a cow lost her calf, and he had a calf that lost its mother. He cut the skin off the dead calf, tied it onto the calf that lost its mother, I guess so it would carry the scent yep. to the mother and calf, works. and she let that one suck. Start feeding. Yeah. yeah. And then she raised it just like her own. Yep. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I've seen it happen, so, and, it, and it works. So what is science saying is making these happen? Making that, making making what happen? Those those things make making that connection. Emotions, what is that happen? Like yes, emotions. like uh, what what because well, because there's, there's, that, a, there's a couple right. The big one is with with that, for instance, is is pheromones. I mean, there's, it's a scent. There's a reason that that works is because it smells the calf that's putting off the same pheromone. It's on the skin. It smells the pheromones that that calf had that said, "This is mine." So once that skin wear off. Does that cow still have the... At, at that point, she's got attached enough to that calf and its sense that she doesn't differentiate. So what comes in kind of goes off of what you're asking, like, and this goes back to kind of like society in general. Like, would you consider yourself a libertarian? Like, if it's straight science, like, what gives us the liberties we believe we have? Like, free will, freedom of this, that, and the other. Like, kind of what... Or just the, the thought of figuring stuff out, like. So, what's the purpose of science discovering it? Like, I don't understand. Like, if there is nothing more or beyond for it, like, like is science trying to like get to like an ultimate scientist? Like, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, like no. no, no. no so, so, you understand what I'm saying, yeah, right? So, so I, I think you're. Right, so right so but. your question I finally understand. I think we're, you're giving science more credit than you should, <laughs> because this ideal of like as a scientist, like this ideal that I'm trying to create. Yeah, I want I want to improve the world. I want people to be better. I want to do all these great and wonderful. I want to discover the next. You know, I want to discover the cure for cancer. I want to do all those things, but to be honest, it's just in the nature of who I am. Right, it's. Because we teach this in classes, right? We teach like the scientific method, right? You observe something, you make a hypothesis, you design an experiment. Science works more like, oh, I blew that up. That was cool. I want to do that again, right? I mean, it, it's, you you want, you, I mean, scientists are that in their nature. I, I just want to know more, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's, I'm yeah. not driven by, I mean, and, and I want those things. I'm a moral person. I want the world to be better and I want to help with it. And sometimes I set out to 
cure cancer, right? Sometimes I say, this is what I want to know more about. It's like we were talking about learning earlier. It's just a, a bug that bit me really young, and I want to know more. I always want to know more. So, and the truth. And more. the truth. And not the truth. Just, I want to know how yeah. something works. So why. in a sense, you are basically saying that our morals are only set based on what it is we want to know and how bad we want to know it. Well, no, I think my morals are separate from anything I want to know in science. My morals are, are based on my conscious and, and my memories and what I've learned from society or the people around me. Like, my morals are from things that I've been taught and, I, and not necessarily things that I've went out and learned about how the universe works. I think, I think, I believe if there was just a mother and a child and she was starving and she had to kill herself to feed her child. I think as that child is eating, that child's going to be crying, even though this child knows that they're hungry, right? Why oh, is the sure. child crying? Well, because because they know it doesn't have a mother now. Okay, so, but but my thing, thing, thing is, right, that, that being that don't know anything about it, right, why does it feel as if it's missing anything when it purpose right then, right then was just to eat. Well, it's, and it kind of goes back to, and that segues perfectly into your question about, you know, how you, like, how we feel about we have all these rights. And, and, and here's the thing. If I go strictly just science, if we get rid of the moral part of Michael and the conscious part of Michael and, and just the science, science for facts, mm -hmm. I don't think we have any rights at all, ever. Right, it's it's a once you get to that, it's an animal kingdom thing. But you did say at the beginning of this that we do need you. You feel like we need both, right? Yeah, I, and I think that's yes. why, right? Because, yes, because that's the thing. Like, do you want to live in a world where the most powerful person rules over everyone else? Yeah, right. Because because we were talking about like knowledge is power, right? So, like, if I'm the smartest person and I figure out how to control the whole rest of the world, right? So you are willing. Go ahead. I mean, that would be, I mean, if it was just science, Michael, that would be it, right? I mean, because the ideal is, I mean, at the end of the day, like, from an animal kingdom perspective, it's about, you know, reproduction and power and control and and being that. So, I mean, if, if it was science and science's sake, like, I, I don't feel that anyone has freedoms, right? That That's the thing that says we have freedoms comes from humanity and morality. That goes to like the, with just the truth of just say this flame. You have some people look at it and be like, it's a flame. It's been here forever. And then you have somebody look at it and say, I wonder what makes it orange. And right. they spend a whole life trying to figure out why it's orange. You know what I'm saying? What does it prove or what does it do to, to them? It, it, it might be their, uh, their findings does it not of, mean anything on, it might not mean nothing to you, <sighs> but, to figure that out, there is no reason for it. It's just, it's just a oh he figured it out. That well, I mean, and our the history truth, is there. It's the truth because if you figure it out, all the other people that didn't care now they might care. But why do we know about the truth? The truth that is is just I don't know because if there is no if there is no such thing if there is no such thing I said like. I'm very more religious than I, I mean, I want to say religious, spiritual than I am with science, right? Like, I, I believe in science, but I think science has, it's like, it's like the last resort. Like, it's like, it's, it was supposed to be the last resort. It was not supposed to be like the ultimate resort. I think that we resorted to, to that. And I think it weakened us a lot. I think it did. I think it weakened us more than, so Why we the, were the whole science or just a particular no, like uh, like them science trying to figure in out, a general? It, uh, I think it weakened our us existence. A lot. I think I think it disconnect us more than it connected us. I, um, and that's my biggest be belief is is we can no longer truly understand or be connected to things that plants. But the truth be told is we should be able to. We should be able to be so connected to them that we understand them without um, um, having to cut through them. I, th I think like, I think one of the and I understand exactly what you're saying there, right? The ideal, and that's what I was saying earlier. Like pure science says, "Hey, I'm I'm the the top 
predator in this circle, everything else serves me and, yes. and I'm going to eat it all. And I don't, that plant's just here to serve me. And, and I, I think to some extent, I mean, that's just, that's a little bit of human nature too, just as much as it is science. Oh, yeah. But, but, but the other side of that is, is I, I honestly believe, like science is in its infancy. Like, it's just starting. I mean, it seems like it's advanced so much, right? We went from, you know, little tablets oh, yeah, that no, we count on to, to computers. It's yeah. And it's not even started. Yes. And, and, I, and I think there'll be a point of which science merges with that, right? And it says, hey, this is why I'm connected. And this is how I'm connected to that plant. And, and I think we'll get an understanding of it eventually where we understand we're all one big ecosystem, right? It's, it's like, how many things do you see out there where you take, you know, Germ. Germs are a bad word, right? I mean, that's a we teach our kids to worry about germs and don't eat this and don't touch that. And, and it, I still, for life, me can't tell you what the hell a germ is. Like it's not <laughs> that's really what a I heard. definition, yeah. right? I mean, it's. I mean, I can, tell you, I, green, well, I, can tell you, I can tell you what bacteria <laughs> are and what viruses are, and but it, it's an ambiguous word. And Seven but, point. but but the thing about that is 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 you teach people this, and, and and here's the thing: you're you have more bacteria in you, more bacterial cells than you do human cells. Any given day, and, you're, and, and the thing is, they help you, right? They're the reason you can make Hold B12. Up. What do you mean? Stuff. That's why they say don't cells. use hand sanitizer and so bacteria much. Cells. So, so bacterial cells like E. coli, you're full of E. coli right now. Okay. You're just not full of pathogenic E. coli that's killing you, right? Some E. coli is not terribly bad, and some of it is. And and so if you look at at the human body, right, through your intestine, through your colon, it's full of bacteria. Okay. And that bacteria helps you digest stuff. It helps you make some chemicals that you don't, right? When you look at the the diversity of that bacteria, it points to potential causation and or cures for diabetes, for obesity, for all of those things because we're very intricately connected to the bacteria. Like it, we, we're showing roles that it has to do with how well our immu- immunological system works. Okay. So so we tend to think of ourselves as human. Like you're a human being. Mm-hmm. You don't think of yourself as an environment for bacteria. Right, you don't think of yourself as a mixed species of human and bacteria. So yeah, what that ain't very sexy, cells. right? No. right it's not, but the truth <laughs> is, it's becoming to seem more and more that way, right? We're we're not just human beings; we're a symbiote organism with all this bacteria that lives in us that helps us. Without it, you wouldn't be alive. So what miles does, and does, miles of veins and cardiovascular so without, systems? Without and, science, you wouldn't know that. What does the human cells do then? He well, just explained to me the bacteria cells. Well, I mean, the human cells do all the other stuff too, right? I mean, you have muscle cells that move, you have brain cells that, and so that, there is less of that than there are bacteria. So, so, so human cells? cells are eukaryotic, so they're about ten times the size of a bacterial cell. So you actually have more bacterial cells than you do human cells, but they're tiny. But oh, so, okay. so they take up less mass. So you have more mass of human cells, uh-huh. but if you count the number of human cells, it is less than the number of bacterial cells that you have. It's just they're so much smaller. Huh. And you mostly find them in the gut, right? So when you teach this in anatomy, you teach like tube within a tube, right? So so from my mouth to my rectum okay. is actually an open environment, right? It's, a, it's exposed to the environment on both sides. Okay. And so technically that's not inside of me. It's almost like it's on outside of me, right? It's yeah. definitely inside Damn. of me, but yeah. it's exposed Ooh. to the yeah, environment, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and so the, the bacteria you find there, right? You don't find them necessarily in, in your muscle and you don't find them necessarily roaming around your lungs or in your brain, but they're in that track that seems to be on the outside of us, although it's on the inside of us. We damn near like a pipe. Yeah. Or something so, like that. so right. yeah. So now, through, there's some valves and stuff in there, sure, but but it is. It's basically a pipe that runs through, right? Mm. So through that pipe, bat, bacteria is literally every inhale and exhale is a bacteria that you inhale and exhale. Well, in it's, it's when you talk like esophagus, stomach, intestines, colon, it's through there. Hopefully it's not inhale, exhale, but I mean, we do inhale and exhale. I mean, fortunately we have, you know, the grossest thing we tend to think of mucus, right? Because people hawk loogies yeah, and that's yeah. gross. But I mean, that's like an inborn HEPA filter, right? That filters 99.9% of the bacteria that you go <sighs> and breathe in, <laughs> right? And I mean, that's the thing. Because it, it, I mean, you see people that don't deal with that well, like people yeah. with like cystic fibrosis, um, they have a pro- problem making a, a cow's a, a, sodium chloride solution that actually that mucus sits on. So they have trouble moving the mucus up. So it sinks down. And the, the problem with that is, is they keep getting lower respiratory infections because that bacteria that would have been carried out, mm-hmm. it's carried down. So they get pneumonia over <laughs> and over and over and over mm. again. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're this big working system 
And the thing is, I don't think that's any different than, I mean, that that's just us as an environment. Okay. We live in this environment too with the plants and things. And it, yes. And I think science will elucidate that, that connection that we have with stuff. I think it's just in its infancy and, and not quite yet capable of getting us there. Okay. Then let me ask so, you this. Go ahead. I was going to get into quick questions real quick. Yeah, yeah. Do questions. Uh, I do have Three minutes question. a piece or so. Uh, if you want to start off, you can start off. Um, all right. Now that we talk about all of that, right, as a scientist, um, and then also knowing the, because you saying that we, we kind of need both, right? Um, that's a very, Sun Tzu, like I said, he says both can exist, none exist. You know, I think that's the same thing with government science, science, and or like you need a religion and you need. But that means that you are saying that religion is like a magic, right? Um, but it's it, it's a well, trick, and, 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 and you and are I, accepting I, 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 a I trick. I don't, I don't say it. Over I don't like say a, I don't say it meaning it's a trick. Okay. I mean, ma- magic is to me is not a, it's not a trick. It's just something we don't understand yet. Okay. So when I say religion, I don't I don't okay. mean it's a trick and it's non existent. I mean there are plenty of things in the universe that we don't understand and they s- would seem like magic. Okay. Right? I mean a, a star blowing up and if we didn't I mean that would be magic in the sky. Now I can talk about the science of that now. No, but yes. you know, thousands of years ago. Back then it was like an explosion. It, it was of magic, magic yes, right? And yes. I and I'm, I think, you know, a lot of stuff we don't understand is still that, right? If we got into memories earlier and that's memories are something that Right now, I was telling you, like, there's some talk and explanation, some science going on about trying to figure out how, like, quantum mechanically that works. We don't know. I mean, we're working on it, but we don't know it. Mm-hmm. Right? We have some ideals and some theories. and But, but there's but, no, but, like... But technically, is that not still like magic? Right? Because we don't understand. It ha- It works. Yeah. We don't know how it works. And, and to me, that's the definition of magic. Right? But faith, if you talk about it, you, people have different faiths and believe in different things. And that doesn't mean any of it's false, right? I mean, the, the part of all of that that I say is false is if you say someone else's beliefs are false. Like, I don't think you can claim one thing and and claim someone else is necessarily wrong because of it. But so, I, I think that's fallacious because we don't understand enough to be able to say. And so, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about the truth, about your question. Uh, that would be like uh, someone sitting here and saying, uh, God made this fire, mm-hmm. and then a scientist saying, "No, these molecules <laughs> did this and this, yeah. this, 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 this." this. Gonna, yeah. You know, and it's like, and they prove it right there. Yeah, and then I think I think we are at that point too. The science is so like vivid, like we see it like every day. It's proving thing every day. It's like showing us like this is what it is. It makes so you don't it think bring, that truth it needs it to bring be? in the question of the religion, yeah. right? Like to this day. But but I think you need to question religion. No 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 no, no it's fine. I think you need to question science. No no it's yeah. true. But my thing like to this day, what we don't understand is to to be a pope. If I'm not wrong, you have to be able to perform actual miracles, like heal sick, heal crippled and blind. You have to be able to do these things. No no no. no? I don't think so. No more. No. Is that like a, I don't think a I, myth? I, I don't think to be to be to, to, miracles to, to be to be declared a saint, you have to perform three miracles. Okay. And that's the only thing I know of. So, so my thing that is... I don't even know if... if hope is if, a bloodline if, thing, ain't it? If we are no. declared since... It's voted on. Yeah, it's political. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's political. It was supposed to be holy smoke, but it's never holy smoke. It's still at the smoke. Um, but, so wait. So, since we are talking about things like sense, are you... Like, are, are these sins? Do you believe that it did perform these... Miracles type deal, or do you think that it's just like a another magic trick in order to keep that hope alive in like that balance um, alive? And my okay. final, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. no, no, no. And, and the big conclusion I would like to say that is like, do you think I do you think that should be an end to this story with like with like a great scientist? Like the all creator scientists, the all ultimate scientists, I don't know, like something that's such you don't have to call call the guy. Or do you think that we should just continue with with this? You you exist, you dust away and you just continue the shit kind of deal. I mean, I think that's exactly what it's gonna be, right? We we dust away eventually. Like, yeah. And I mean that's a a lot of people don't like that ideal, but I mean everything says that, right? I mean 
it's one of those, my, my favorite version of this is one, one of the smartest people. I, Stephen Hawking is one of the smartest people that we know of that's existed. And, and I mean, I'm exactly the same. Like if we don't get off this rock as a species, mm-hmm. we'll stop. Right. I mean, we, we you can like the mat, we study other stars and we know eventually the sun's going to implode and it's going to become a giant red. So it's going to actually move out enough to engulf the earth. Now that's, probably 5 billion years from here now. And it doesn't matter, right? I'm not going to be around then. I hope not. Maybe I hope so. I don't know. Yeah, I know, right? I, I, <laughs> but, I wouldn't mind. But, 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 but the thing about that is, is, is you know, if, if we're still humans on Earth and we haven't figured out how to go out there, we're done. We're toast, right? Or, or maybe if not, I mean, there's, um, I saw something the other day that was like, oh, the Y chromosome will stop existing in 1.4 million years, which I don't know that I agree with that. That's, it seems like a, weird fallacious statement based on statistics that are probably flawed. But the thing is, I mean, it's not untrue in the sense that a species as a species, we're, cha- we're destined to change, right? Does a human now look remotely like a, what a human will look like a hundred million years from now? And, and I can't tell you the answer to that. I mean, possibly not. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe we change enough that we're different because we have to change because we have to go, you know, yeah, because I don't know the same as I did five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Do they bring uh, us? Yeah. But but I'm hoping something will come down and give us a ride to wherever we need to go, right? I mean. Shoot. So <laughs> immortality is, it, is, is like, a no like, for you guys? Hiking, like you, you, that could go <laughs> one of a couple of ways, but yeah. not always good. <laughs> don't want to be immortal then? Y'all don't nah. want to be immortal? I would, I would, I would live a long time given the choice. We spe- man, like if you're because imagine cre- what you can learn. I if know, you believe, right? like, if you're a Christian, like, you believe you are immortal, right? No, not yet. Not after you die, and then you become immortal. It's the whole physical legality of losing this. But don't that, it that say that, that you'll, you'll, you'll have a new body created and all that. You see, you know, but my whole thing is, I don't like, like, like he said, Perfect. right? In a hundred thousand years, he life. don't know why he was gonna look like. like what if? Because <laughs> no, because <laughs> no, that that comes to Every my next day, question, I'm right? I'm a conscious asshole. Oh Jesus! It would be one of the worst in there, right? Over and I'm over. I'm at the wrong end of that pipe we was talking about. <laughs> you piece of shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to go? See, uh, I, yeah. The other question I have for you, we was talking about. Uh, hereditary things. So Maxi, you know, he's been pretty open about his battle with alcoholism and the uh, recovery community. Now, you know, it's a big thing. They brought science into it, and they believe that alcoholism or addiction is a disease and it's hereditary. What's your take on that? I agree with that implicitly. So when you talk about that being a a disease and b hereditary, so so when you talk about so a lot of things when you talk about hereditary, and you you mentioned earlier when we were break, you were talking about like behavioral things, right? So um, alcoholism is it's a behavior, right? But um, there's there's a sense of that when you talk, and and you can see it in the slightest things, right? I mean, if people that have kids or something, you can see behaviors, and, and I you know have. People I know that the, the kids haven't seen their one of their parents, their dad for most of their lives since they were like six weeks old. But having known their dad and like and watching them, like they have these little ticks and behaviors that you're like, holy crap, that's yeah. their dad, right? So I mean, there are behavioral things that are inherently genetic, right? And, and we there's science behind that, right? We were talking about imprinting a while ago, and I mean, you see it in ducks that follow their mother, right? That's genetic. Like the first thing they see is what they follow, right? So you get this cute news story where the ducks follow like the beagle around. Um, and so there are things that are imprinted that are completely behavioral. A bee, a bee does a certain dance and that's completely genetic. The genetics tell that bee to dance exactly how it does. And if it comes into that hive and doesn't dance that dance, the other bees kill it immediately. So they didn't and teach it that dance. Teach it. They, don't, they yep. didn't teach it that. It's just inherent. They, they mm. know how to do it and that's genetic, right? Which kind of gets back to the, our memories genetic and not, maybe not necessarily memories, but definitively... We, I could give you countless examples of behavior that is. Hold up. Are you saying each half has a different a kind of dance? dance? Yep. And one bee can get lost. If it gets and he's like, oh, look at how. Yeah, they have to, They do the dance when they come in. And if they don't but do I'm the saying, dance the right way exactly with with precision, the other bees kill it. So, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so, but so is it possible that a bee could do 
a different half dance though and get in? Is that a possibility? No, because they don't know how. It's oh like, my yeah, god! Oh animals. no, that's yeah, messed it's, up. It's like a secret handshake. Are you yeah. kidding me? Certain animals do have oh. learned behaviors from Are you other kidding animals. Me? Like we were talking about dolphins that, right. and orcas, they have an actual hierarchy. Right, right, and, and and so here's the interesting response to your question, right? Because when you talk about learned behaviors, because we always want to go into genetics, and yes, they're they're definitively genetically passed on behaviors. Period. Right, um, but there's also, I mean, we get in science, we talk nature versus nurture. Right, what you are naturally inclined to do, what's innate, what's genetically coded, but also what's your environment, how were you raised, right? Yeah. So, so when you talk about alcoholism, mm. there is distinctly statistical evidence that that is hereditary, right? That, that if your parents and grandparents were also alcoholics, you're more inclined to be an alcoholic, right? But the other side of that, right? So, if we talk about drug use, right? So, if your parents were not drug users, but you're put in an environment, right? When you're raised up and you're raised with people and you're around people that are doing drugs all the time, it's more likely that you're going to be comfortable with that and you're going to do drugs, right? So there's this nurture versus nature thing. And I think both of them are probably equal, right? right? It, it's your environment that you're in, mm, right? It's like sense. alcoholism, right? Yeah, so, so it brings I, it out of you. Yeah, do, do, the I have, trigger. do I have propensity for that is one thing. But now, do I have something that triggers that, right? Am I around people drinking all the time? Or am I in an environment that stresses me out that says drinking relieves some of that, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, so there's a lot of your environment that will push you to do those things. But there's definitively evidence that you also have a genetic component for it, right? It's been, and, and, it, and it's not as close as to everyone gets it, right? When you talk about genetic, there's a, there's a thing. You know, I, I look very much like my dad. My sister looks very much like my mom. Um, when you talk about a, addictive personalities, you know, I, I have none. Like I don't, I'm, I just, I could stop anything or stop anything today. And like, it, I, I like wine, but if you tell me tomorrow I couldn't drink it anymore, I might not like that, but I'd be fine. Right. Um, I've never had the inclination. Like I've been around and exposed to cigarettes and I don't never had the inclination to, to smoke one. My, my sister's exactly the opposite. Like she blocks on See, stuff. I do it, like with addiction. I think we got it. There's physical addictions and there's mental addictions too. Like if you're on medicine, your body becomes dependent on it, right? Right. So like to me, that's a, there's a difference. Like some people say once an addict, always an addict, and I don't necessarily believe that. If you're not in – I don't believe if you're in active addiction, I don't believe you're an addict, right? I mean – Well, I, I think what – and I agree. It doesn't necessarily mean you're an addict. I think it means you have the propensity for it, right? I mean yeah. – it means that now you have to watch what environment you put yourself in. Because okay. if you put yourself back in that environment again, there's a higher likelihood that it comes because that environment is probably what helped you get there in the first place. And the addictive habits too. I mean, like just say with alcohol uh, or, or drugs or anything with addiction, which what I've seen is that usually the addiction switches. Like it, it really never leaves. Um, you start yes. getting, you know, you, you might put be it into something to else. Drugs, you get off yes. drugs. Now you want to have sex all the time. Oh, yes, no, or it you is. Get heavy yes. set. A lot of people, and get I literally set, tell that start see, eating see, more. Me, see the cool thing about that, if you think about it, one of the things I think is cool about that is if you know that. If you think about it, yeah, you can use that as a tool. That's as a tool, all the time. No, 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 it is, it is. That's what I did. You can you can channel that addiction to something else, right? And, and you could be books or reading or yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so if I wanted to do something like so, I create a mo- like so. If I decide I'm going to stop smoking or I'm going to stop drinking. So I'm going to take up. I decide it's coffee, right? Mm-hmm. So I have a definitive moment every morning or every day. I stop at a coffee shop or it's at my house and I sit down with that cup of coffee and I let myself have that time, but. It, something that's enjoyable and I get that kind of dopamine kick from it mm-hmm. and I can let that become my new habit, right? Yeah. It's the new thing that satisfies mm-hmm. that thing. So, but you can use it as a tool to do other things, yeah. right? Like, like what hey, I did. I'm going to give myself this time yeah. of day to, to read this. Or you see, things. Mm-hmm. that is one, one thing that I just even was having a talk about with like this man for the man is, is especially on the religion aspect of life, right? When you are in the religion and they want you to, quit an addiction that is considered a sin, right? That we consider sin, right? The what what I've what I've been pre pre preaching is this is that addiction, since we know the physicality of humans, right? Like the science of humans, 
we know that addiction is something that is a like like we said we do con con it's just a con constant thing of right. some something good or bad. So we got to switch that right. And one thing that I want to teach in the church, or I want the church to start to teach, is is you have to put them on something else in a physical life, right? Right? Then just oh, stop this, and it will just go away. Right. You understand, right? Like because you, you have to put the man on something new. You got to give the man something purpose new. Because we are talking about alcohol, like like we're talking about, like are you guys saying that. If my grandfather and my father or somebody else was an alcoholic, there is a chance that there's statistically more of a chance that you will be. Yeah. Um, but what if I'm grown in a non environmental alcohol place, a place that is not? Then there's alcohol. less a statistical chance. There's like, but but is that in my genetic? It's just there'll be less chance that my gene will be active. Uh, uh, I don't know something um, like that. Well, there's there's more more or less of a chance no matter what when you so I, I tend to refer to that as like a addictive personality trait. Okay. Right. So I know people that so so we say alcohol right because that's bad because well you know, DUIs and people wreck and people yeah. get hurt. Yes. What if you were addicted to kale? <laughs> I know I know people that are. I mean I know people yeah. that have to they make their kale chips and they have to have it right. You have a like, lot of iron. Yeah, well, they, they, but they feel unhealthy if they don't have it. Right. I mean they, <laughs> they feel iron. bad if they don't have it. <laughs> And they feel good if they yes. do. It, right. it's, yes. By every definition, it's an addiction, right? Like yes. If, if they run out, they have to go to the store and get that. Like yes. they, they were going to make chips that they need to. That's the thing. But, like, what does the addiction drive? It makes the person, it's what I consider is bad about and, that and a addiction. a lot of times, like the part that I think is more genetic is the addictive personality trait. And a lot of it's the environment that sets up what are you addicted to. And the excessiveness of what you're doing. Yes. Because okay. right. it yes. could be excessive, just like drinking. Drinking too much makes you alcoholic. But just drinking enough, you're not an alcoholic. Or just drinking when you need it or knowing when to stop and different things like that. You want to know. Excessiveness of drugs, alcohol, are good things. I'm excessively in this building, recording, working. Uh, Maybe I'm addicted to working or workaholic, but also learning because every day I come to work, it's a different person. It's a different thing that I'm doing, and I have multi- things to do so my creativity don't slow down so i right. get tired yeah. of recording people but i can pick up my camera and start filming people right. yeah. now the fun part about that is is some people like that's a perception thing right so if, if that's an addiction right for you that works right that's a positive mm-hmm. influence in your life and you do stuff and you get stuff done you, pro- you make stuff and produce stuff and you know but but a lady waiting at home might not think that's the best thing right so it's it's a perception of who thinks that's good and who doesn't yes right um, just like alcohol, right? Alcoholism, terrible thing because bad things happen, right? But, you know, what about the number of, like, Hemingways that we've had that were only wrote when they were completely drunk and we have these classics that come out yeah. of that? Yeah. Like, perceptually... Yeah. Oh, I know. If, so it's good. Some, some of my songs... Trust, right? Some of right. my songs, right? Like, because I knowing what it does, right? Like, I do music knowing what it does. There are times that I'm like... Like you are wanting this like an energy, did this like all like this like lo- loosen, and you are like, if, if if I was to run ten miles right now, I could get literally that feeling that I want. Yeah. But you don't have that time to run a ten miles. You are like, but if I took two shot, I would get that same feeling of if I just ran 10, 10 miles. That loser, you understand right? So then you weigh like, what is it? Can I get here much instant? Which which one is much more accessible? And the whole thing with alcohol that we're talking about is weird because. Um, Really religious anyway. We're gonna read, but reading the Bible, I just in Genesis, I, I, alcohol just came out of nowhere. Like there was nowhere where it was like God made alcohol. One day they were like, and Noah was drunk because after the flood he was drunk, and I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense because he just you know witnessed the murder of you know re- re- religiously he was a part part of a gen. I mean, glorious godly genocide. I would like to say, say say that because that's what it was. Um, he needed to re-cleanse the earth, and he chose well, a guy in his family. Back then, right? They but the thing that is, they, no, no, no. But they don't tell you where it came from. Yeah. It's just one day he was drunk, and then it made you question like, "Why he drunk? Why is he drunk? Where did alcohol come from?" So if it was. It, it, it wasn't like a. Well, so, so it's, uh, to me, it's amazed me that like it would just come in there. As like some something that he turned to, 
right? During that time of recovery. What right? is the first recorded? Yeah, I, well, I see, that's the thing, right? So, and then we were talking history earlier, right? I mean, what's recorded matter, right? So, my favorite yeah. version of this, because um, we go through and talk fermentation and stuff like that in, in some of the classes. I, I mean, I think of Romans and Greeks, I guess, when I think, because they had the Dionysus, the god of wine. Yeah, well, I mean, you can go, go way, pa- way, yeah. way past, yeah. like, Samaria. And, like, I mean, you can go back, and, and I, there's, I know at least pottery they found, like, 10,000 years old that have remnants of... of Fermented barley and the Chinese right? so, been around. I mean, it's for, been doing it, and this we've been making alcohol. alcohol since we have recorded history. So, right. um, but I mean, the cool part about that is, is you can take the humans out of it, right? So, you can see this in the animal kingdom. And one of my favorite versions of that. So, on the islands of Madagascar, there's something called a pintail shrew. Um, it's it looks a little bit like a weird, you know, gremlin monkey kind of thing, but has a really long tail with a feather on it, which is why we call it a pintail. But it's nocturnal. Okay. And um, so, so it lives out at night, and the thing is, like it, it'll even like during the day and at night, like it'll it sleeps a lot, it'll wake up, and scientists watched them one time noticed like it would actually it would wake up and it would go down, and they have these big palm leaves there, and the palms like will collect water from dew and mm-hmm. rain and stuff, mm-hmm. and um and the palm and and they would go drink from the palm leaves, and then they would go back and go to sleep, and then they'd come back and drink from, them. and they just went back and forth to this palm leaf drinking. And when they start looking at it, like what you see is the palm leaves actually had this natural kind of like sugar that's there, <laughs> palm tree, and, and like you palm have this wine. natural yeast from the air that comes in and starts like settling in the water and it ferments. Mm. And so when they went looking at like the the, the water here it was actually this kind of huge, like it was about a three and a half percent alcohol beverage. Like it's like yeah. you know, Bud little Light palm wine type go of deal. Out, it would go out west, <laughs> and so these things like wake up. And go get drunk and pass out, and wake up and go get drunk and pass <laughs> out. Piece of shit. <laughs> but I mean, that's a that's a. They're not driving, right? I mean, yeah. That's, but that's just a, that's in the animal kingdom, right? So no, was so it one where that day came from? Like, probably predates human existence, let alone human history. Like, right. I mean, when you talk about fermentation and, and sugar and water, that's all it takes, and it's so easy and natural, and it happens without us being present. I mean, it. Logic would say that it's been there since day one. And I'm pretty sure if you gave any animal alcohol, it's going to want more. Yeah. Almost I mean, any animal. Like, you know, you think about it. Like, if you gave, you know how people give their dogs beer and things like that? Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. I mean, it, it's, it triggers a dopamine response, right? I mean, your brain goes, woo, I like this, right? I mean... Is and, the, is the fact that the same that thing is, as giving them sugar. If you give any animal yeah. sugar, they're going to want more. I think hum, humans, we are against it because of the lack of control that it gives to our physical body. But alcohol does do something like, I don't know. I mean, I, they say, you know, that it, it, it can be healthy at a glass of wine, uh, what, a day or something like right. that, good for the heart and stuff yeah. like that. But excessiveness is the human nature even, of greediness. Yes. Like, if, if, even biblically, it says, "Not don't drink is not to be drunk, right? right? The drunkenness is the bad part of it. Yeah. It's not the drinking of it. Right. But like, but you know, people just said it like, do not drink. Like, like you know what? Don't don't even get engaged in total do it. So that way you won't go past to the point of drunkenness. Like you right. won't lose that control. So religious just tell you not to do it, or your parents tell you not to do it. But like when I was growing up. We grew up with, you can't drink alcohol. The first time I drank alcohol, I got whooped. I was like nine, nine years old, 10 years old. My mother whooped me until I was silver, right? But when I had chicken parts, they gave me shots. Yeah. They say drink a- a- alcohol, and that helps. So now you're yeah. sitting down there like every night, you're taking two, three shots before you go to bed, but you yeah. got whooped for taking one shot. On, on your own. So as long as it's being controlled. I bet you slept well. Oh, no, I did. Every single time. It was, it was like, I mean, but I'm just saying, like, I feel as if, like, it, it becomes like a control thing because of our lack of control of ourselves yeah. whenever we do it. Like, so DUIs and stuff. Yo, we got to wrap push. this up. We got to wrap this up, man. Man, uh, Michael Ben, amazing. Yeah, no, yes, honestly. Yeah, Listen, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I, I got so the much knowledge you bring. And I'm like, I ain't even going to dig into no, it. No, so we, we have to watch this. And then I have to come back with more quick question, I yeah, believe. I think yeah. it was that great. It was really awesome. Was it was a good time. No. 
We, yeah, we appreciate, appreciate you. We appreciate you. We're going to stop by the Preservation Bar. Yes. You know, here in Bowling Green. Y'all got to check that out on Nashville Road. Uh, I do be performing there monthly. Um, I got a show coming the 30th of this month. Um, it's the Afro first night. Afro show. Yeah. Yeah, in Bowling Green, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so we are trying to kind of get that going. It's a good start, and the Preservation Bar is a good spot to come and chill. So yes. I believe you all have a deal with Lost River Pizza. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, was, no. Wait, was that just a Well, day? that was just for St. Patrick's. They, oh, okay. We did a thing with Lost River Cave where we they dyed the river green, and um, they were giving people little coins when they went on tours or went to visit the river and come back. And Oh, okay. Uh, we right. try to help. The, we did a lot of charity events with those guys just because it's... Um, Lost River Cave? The cave. The Kaufman's? No, 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 no. Lost River Cave. The, oh, the, the actual. The actual okay. underground, like, um, cave river. Because, I mean, that's... Most people don't get to enjoy that, right? But it's a naturalist environment. Right. I mean, it's. Right. I can leave our parking lot of preservation <laughs> yeah. and be there in one minute. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it's, you know, seventy two acres, in the middle of the city. And and I grew up kind of in nature, which is a lot of why I am who I am. The reason I want to be a Science, scientist and yeah. I want to understand stuff mm-hmm. is that made me who I am. And you know, it's funny. I moved away and went to college, and I went to UK and Lexington, and I didn't have that there. And there are places there, but. Honestly, I didn't know yes, about sir, them, and no, I went from, you know, yeah. I had an uncle that had thousands of acres. Yeah, if you're from eastern around. Kentucky, you're country boy. Right, back and, and, woods, I, yeah. and then when I got to the city, I couldn't do that, and it kind of drove me a little crazy. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, here, I mean, I, I have a farm, so my, my kids can do that, but but most kids don't get the opportunity to get out mm-hmm. in nature. And I think it's Man. I think it's necessary. No, it is yes, a necessity. Yes, I know. Trust so, me, I'm so, from the village, yeah. and I want to go back. So I do everything so. I can with those guys to help them raise money because I think they do such a good job with nature and education and kids. So. Yeah. Yep. So that's what's up, man. It's another episode down. We appreciate you for stopping by. Yes. Uh, make sure y'all like, subscribe, do all that type of stuff, man, for more content. And we're going to have them back. We're going to have them back. Oh, yeah. Make sure y'all comment and do all that type of stuff. And so we can get We might be traveling here. to him, you know, at the bar, you know, so <laughs> yeah. we can I try to sit down there and have a whole conversation with the whole bar. Most yeah. definitely. Most definitely. Well, good night, and we'll see you on the next one.